Hi, in this video I'm just going to go through the special announcements or checklists as well as bullpen page and stand soapbox. Now I haven't of course got every single issue but I just want to go through a reasonable run through of how it changed over time in the 60s all the way through to the 70s and it sort of of course faded away. Now I suspect they still make announcements and things, there's various things, but you can see there you've got like Daredevil, Submariner, I haven't even actually got here the numbering, a few have, Spider-Man 11 you can see there, and of course X-Men number 4. Now this was an issue of Fantastic Four 25 and this was dated, let's have a quick look, I want to say right date, April 1964, so you can see April 1964, they were sort of starting to add this. Now a great source for all these various checklists probably is going to look in omnibus collections. Now I've probably got lots of them in omnibus collections so you can just run through them there. But I'm just going to run through the actual comics. Again these are not in order but I'm going to show a sort of rough development of them. and they weren't consistent as far as I can see I've just been looking at different issues sometimes same month seems to be some slight variations you might have a slightly different image or something that seems to be appearing. So let's just have a next look at the next one. I love these, of course, as well. These are always great. I suppose in many ways, these, of course, were the announcements. These were the adverts. So you've got here, Strange Tales, Captain America, etc. And let's just go and see there, of course, the Submariner one. That was another one as well. So Man Without Fear, number seven. And you can see the checklist. Again, we've got no stand soapbox or any sort of uh, bullpen notes. You've got the letters page, of course. And you can see you've got Fantastic Four 38, Spider-Man 24, Daredevil 7. Of course, it announces obviously the one that, obviously Avengers there. You've got, let's see, Avengers. Well, actually, weirdly, it doesn't include the one. So that's something that changed because that one doesn't include. So they did obviously make variations. I wonder if you go to Fantastic Four 38, and I haven't got that copy in front of me, that if you look in there, that does that include that? So that would be an interesting variation, which I hadn't noticed. So here's another one. This is Tales to Astonish 73. And I'm not going to be able to say, obviously, the dates because I haven't got the dates. And so look at these on the front. And it's going to take a long time to go through them all. Let's see. This is going to 1965, November 65. And sometimes they're not even in the same places. So you can be looking. They're not always at the back. And again, you've got another one. Mighty Marvel Checklist. And I would love to see a book of all these checklists, as well as bullpens, as well as stone, Stan's soap boxes. There is a book of Stan's soap boxes, but that is all there is in terms of all those sort of various things that he spoke about, obviously, over the years. And you can see there Fantastic Four 44, Spider-Man 30, Avengers 21, and so on. So again, notice in there, it doesn't mention the Astonish, so that obviously was a pattern that they were going with early on. Daredevil 10, Thor 121, Sergeant Fury 23. Let's go to Strange Tales. Now, again, I might go back in time a bit. But you can see the change in the style. So this one is from January 65. So January 65, and you've got a special announcement section. So you can see there, Strange Tales 129, that was about it. I don't think that there was, at this point, they just didn't include, and I noticed when I was looking through my, some of the journey into mysteries, I was looking some of the real, not very early 64, 63 period, some of them didn't seem to include any special announcements. And yet I'm certain that there were special announcements in other magazines. This one, this is a pop-art one. I love a pop-art one. I don't know why, it was a certain period of Marvel that was called pop-art. I've got quite a few issues as pop art ones, and I just love that bit. I know it's just a look, but still, that's one of those things that just special, more Marvel masterpieces there. You can see, the, and I've actually also got the Spider-Man one there, so I might be able to just obviously do a quick comparison. So let's see if it does mention this one. This one is the Avengers. And again, it doesn't include the Avengers in there. So, okay. And also they've got another announcement over there. So they did actually include... Other announcements elsewhere, you've got the Spider-Man Annual, Sergeant Fury Annual, etc. Also, Millie the Marvel Annual. You can see now, Fantastic Four there, 44, Spider-Man 30, X-Men 13, Daredevil 10, and so on. And it just gave a little bit. I always love the blurbs. And sometimes when you read the blurbs about it, you think, really? Was that the story? Because <laughs> sometimes you just think, no, I think it was slightly different from that. 
but that's obviously what they thought at that time. That's what they were putting. This is another Marvel first. And of course, there was a lot of sort of boosting it up, saying this was going to make the most amazing comic of all time. And of course, the reality was, probably wasn't. So let's go into Spider-Man 1. So that was the Avengers. Yes, they did do that. I, I had never noticed that, but they do vary them. So you've got here, Spider-Man doesn't get mentioned. But in this one, you've got, obviously, Fantastic Four, 44, Avengers 21, etc. But no, Spider-Man. But the Avengers does get mentioned. 21, and that is 21. Yes. And again, we've got the various announcements all the way across this. But they always generally went with the yellow. They did vary it later, but at this period, they were going with yellow. Obviously, that just stands out very nicely on that page. And, of course, you've got there about Spidey, the next issue. This one is September, some September, which year is this? 65. So we're going through, obviously, Fright from Four. Save You, I Must Kill You. And again, Yellow still. So you've got here, they're still obviously following that format. Again, Spider-Man 28, Avengers 19, etc. And again, you've got all the various ones there. Fantastic Four, Annual Number Two, Three. Advertise there, pop-art books. You're reading a pop-art book, a Marvel pop-art book, as it says there, which is always quite nice. That's, well, actually, it wasn't a book. It says productions, which is weird when it says productions. Does it say productions on the other ones? Yes, productions. Never really even noticed that. Always see the pop art bit. Productions. No, productions. Now, this one, obviously, next issue. And again, now on the letters pages, there's no checklist. So you can see there you've got a little next issue one. And let's just turn to the next page. So now they move the bullpen. So I wonder if this was the first time. Marvel bullpen. And you've got here all the details, obviously, of the things, various things that are coming up. Adam Austin, of course, with there, Submariner. You've got Stan Lee, of course, et cetera, et cetera. Jack Kirby's inking, as well as penciling. But you've also got the checklist there. And, of course, they were advertising good old Avengers T-shirts and things. I love those. I never got one. But I always love the adverts for them, anyway. Marvel Comics Group, official swinging stationery as well. So they advertise those. And, of course, you've still got these Marvel masterpieces there. And then it's next issue, that was 22 of Avengers. Now you'll notice I've got a lot of Avengers. I'm running through the Avengers more so than anything else, which of course makes it easier for actually dating it. So this one is obviously December 65. And December 65, we go now to the back end. Of course, the letters page now doesn't have a checklist. Now that did again vary. It did seem that sometimes they included it on the checklist on there. I suppose depending how many letters they got that month or any letters they wanted to include. But then you've got it going, the bullpen bulletin on the next page. The nutty news and notes from one Marvel madman to another. That's quite good. So you've got the mighty Marvel checklist at this point. At least the name was starting. It wasn't just special announcements. It's become the mighty Marvel checklist. A lineup of some of the marvellous, because of course, it didn't include them all. You've got obviously ones like Raw High Kid, Millie the Model, Linda Carter, whatever, were not included in that list. And you can see Spider-Man 32 there. And again, this is the Avengers. It doesn't, again, include the Avengers, which is probably sensible. I never really noticed that before the fact they didn't include the issue. They're Astonish, 75, Sergeant Fury, 25. So that's another. So I suppose if they did bring out a book of all of the checklists, how would they do it? Because there was always going to be one or issue <laughs> you'd be missing each time. It would make it slightly complicated, more complicated than I thought. Maybe they'd have to bring out two to balance it off so they would have every issue still okay that was just an just an idea now you've got here this one's the avengers i'm not certain which issue because of course it doesn't have the details there but again you've got all the various ones there mighty marvel checklist you've got the bullpen bulletins and you've got fantastic four 49 i wonder what happened in that galactus because you've got galactus you've got spider-man x-men 18 strange shells 143 and you also got mighty marvel collector item classics they included those. Quite often they'd include the fantasy masterpiece ones and those sort of things, which were, of course, the reprint mags. And again, the letters page is obviously completely clear of anything like that. Now we move on a little bit. This is obviously 39. I don't know which year this was, but 66, 67, April 67 at this point. I might go back and forth by accident. Didn't seem to have many 66 ones. But, ah, oh, now this is another one. See where they vary. You've got the bullpen there, and you've got all the details there. You've got the mighty... Oh, notice anything different about this page? We decided to omit our mighty Marvel checklist and see if anyone will miss it. I certainly would have done. 
I always thought, I love that, but we figure you'll find it easy. Oh, well, obviously they did bring it back. But here, Mighty Marvel TV stations, etc. So they didn't include it on there. So there's no entry anywhere in the book. So sometimes they did that. They would include it somewhere else. And you got there, obviously, again, now on sale, which is always nice. In many ways, they could have gone with that, I think. They'd, and sometimes you did have that. In the very early days, you had lots and lots of pictures of all of the covers. Of course, when it got 14, 20 covers, they would become very small. So you've got this one now. This is Mighty Avengers 65, June. I don't know when this was. And one says, why don't you remember the dates of every one of these? Well, I don't. Uh, June 69. That's that. June 69, the Avengers. And we gain, we got the checklist back. Yay! And Stan Soapbox. Now, unfortunately, it means there was a gap where I've suddenly had one where suddenly Stan Soapbox appears. Because, of course, in the previous one, there was no Stan Soapbox. Now we've got Stan Soapbox. So it must have been about 68, 69 that that first appeared. And you can see now they've gone blue there, obviously, to differentiate. Obviously, the yellow for Stan. And also, the checklist is actually getting a bit bigger. So this one's Avengers. And have we got the Avengers mentioned there? Again, no. You know, they, I really honestly never... <laughs> so they did change them all the time. So they, obviously these are very... So you've got Submariner, you've got Shield, Iron Man, all the way down there. And you've got, and they're still on sale, Silver Surfer 6. You've got Not Brand Eck, Captain Marvel 14, Captain Savage 14, Collector's Item Classic still being mentioned. And also now... Because they've extended it obviously slightly more, they've got Mad About Millie and Real High Kid. And that was issue number two of Mad About Millie. And Mighty Marvel Western, issue five. If you dig frontier action, this one is in your bag or your bag or something. Now, probably going back again, this is probably, in, this looks slightly older actually. 60, yes, August 68. So it's obviously Submariner, issue four. And again, you've got all the lovely ones on the back. Also, you've got <laughs> they were advertising not brand egg. Now this was number nine. Again, it doesn't include there. And you've got to check this. You've got old oh, stand soap box was there, definitely that period. So you can see there. And also you've got all the details about Silver Surfer, not brand egg in the bullpen bulletins. And again, you've got quite a long list of all the checklists. So you can see there <clears throat> the spectacular Spider-Man. And that was right at the top. That was very unusual. The 35 cent spectacular number issue one. Because it I don't know. It didn't probably did it sell that many. I wonder. It was just and also not brand X. So obviously the ones they were just bringing out, they were putting right at the top. Fantastic Four seventy seven. Obviously at this point, Spider Man sixty three, Marvel Superheroes fifteen, one of the greatest, Medusa one, Doctor Strange under seventy one. You got Nick Fury. You got Marvel Space Born Superhero. Just they put the full title, Marvel Space Born Superhero, Captain Marvel issue four. That was a bit of a mouthful, wasn't it, for the title? Marvel Collector's Item Classic sixteen. Now, there's another one here. This is Cyclops and Marvel Girl. And this is 68 again. So 68. Let's just go back. Oh, it's still got the stand soapbox, but it's blue for the checklist. So again, they varied the checklist. Tales of Asgard. I love that one. Issue 1. That was just a one-off. Also got Sergeant Fury right at the top. Right at the top of the list. It says Marvelous Mags on sale right now. So that seems to suggest all of them. Every single one they were obviously bringing out. So you've got Marvel Super Hero 16, Avengers 56, Avengers Special 2. Oh, they're advertising the specials and things in here as well. Captain America 106, Hulk 108, Hulk Special. And so the X-Men. Again, they didn't include the X-Men in this list. That's that. Which, of course, was the issue was the X-Men. And this one is Submariner 16, and it's going to be... August 69. So we're getting near the, near the 70s now. And now they changed it quite a bit at that point. Did go slightly odd. Maybe because, of course, they were increasing the number of issues. Of course, that was the, the thing at that point. And I don't even know if the ball pen bulletins were in here. Oh, yes, they were. But they was right in the middle, middle of the book this time. So you can see Stan Soapbox and you've got the blue there. And again, it was talking about Avengers, Submariner, George Klein, Mo Mother... Oh, a uh, record album we've heard of. It's Mother Earth, Smasheroo, not Brand Eck. And also, of course, they were advertising all the various on still and still on the sale. Shield number 11, Strange 181, Marvel 21, etc. And also you've got obviously Million Model and Chili. 
I never bought a copy of Chile. Now this is probably again getting into, pro oh, this is April 70. So we're into April 70 with the Avengers. And now, yes, the checklist is gone. So the checklist is definitely gone. You've got Stan Soapbox really getting a lot longer there. And also you've got obviously a list of all, I've got Roy Thomas, all the various best writer, best this, best artist, Georgie Jim Steranko. And you've got other, other items as well, talking about various Marvel Mania International. But the thing was the checklist, I'm certain the checklist was still in here. Yes, I liked it this way. In many ways it was nicer to see it on the single page like that and you can see the Marvel Mania there. And you can see Mighty Marvel checklist. And also they included a lot, and of course, so you had a lot of the smaller ones there didn't give details about it. So all the others, they were given details. Sometimes very, very vague details. DD gets his man, but this time he tackles the galvanising gladiator. He loses the girl he loves, that sort of stuff. Also, you've got Barry Windsor-Smith with a sword and sorcery spine tingler in Chambers, Chamber of Darkness. But you've got that as well. You've got the and, of course. So you've got just a little list there. Peter the Little Pest. Home of the Happy Ghost. <laughs> Doing some real. And also My Love Issue 5, a million model. And a few others as well. Again, ones that definitely should be in omnibus collections. Peter the Pest. I think we're reprints from at this period as well. So I somehow suspect they will never. Unless, of course, they bring those out in the new Atlas comic library that's coming out. Peter the Pest, that's what we want. This one's 72, and again, I'm probably going to go back and forth. I just sort of roughly got them in the period that I thought they were in. Oh, checklist, and it's back again. So you've got now a checklist has rejoined the bullpen page. Now it's called the Sensuous Bullpen, not Marvel. Or everything you wanted to know, we did that one already, etc. And of course, you've still got Stanley's soapbox in yellow still. So it's still going for yellow, and you've got all the details. And I always love reading these. It's always talking about Jerry Conway. It was like finding out about all the various people that were involved in these comics. And also you've got here, this you've got the list there, and you can see things. So I think this one went slightly back, so I, I'm certain it's uh, 72. Uh, some obviously sometimes they they join them back <laughs> for some there was no real logic it was sort of like they obviously had and i don't know if different certain issues had different pictures as well sometimes and you had different so it's and because here you've got this one because it's a fantastic four now i'm assuming with the band that the other issues didn't have that and i don't know i can't compare this one is now into well, obviously it's probably slightly before 72 actually saying that this one's January 61, so I've just gone back a bit. But this time, you see, you've got that format. You've got Rawhide Kid, Marvel Clip. So you've got the Mighty Marvel Checklist. So they're still going with that. Treasure Trove of Traumatically Tempting Titbits. Good old alliteration. Actually, Stan Soapbox, not yellow. So obviously that did vary as well. I didn't realise that. And also you've got variations in the colours as well. So blues and oranges as well going through this. Talking about obviously the awesome Arnold Drake, etc. Sometimes I mention things as well. The comics upcoming that I think never happened or there was going to be some annual or something and some of it never appeared. Might be wrong on that, but it did seem sometimes there was information you think, oh, this is Captain Savage. Now, this did include checklists. Not every, I don't think every issue of every magazine included the checklist. So you might have gone to like the Millie and I haven't got any Millie ones here, but I remember the sort of like Millie and certain magazines didn't have the Marvel checklist is if they didn't want the Marvel Universe to sort of be involved with the Millie ones, which was odd because you think that people who were fans of Millie comic might have turned around and said, oh, you know what, I'm going to try Daredevil. It sounds good. sounds interesting. But they didn't. They just, they didn't always include that sort of information. I might be wrong on that, but I think that was the case that, please put in the comments below if you've got some, obviously, corrections that maybe they did include it, but I don't think they did. So you've got Fantastic Four 107, Spider-Man 83, Silver Surfer 14, and you also got, ta oh, and still on sale. I always love that bit, still on sale. So was that carried over from the previous month? Marvel Super Heroes 25, Marvel Tales, etc. And you've got, again, another little mention. Not, not to mention, not to mention. It's nothing better than a not to mention. So that one was Where Monsters Dwell, My Love for Ringo Kid. No, again, I think they were reprints. But that was Captain Savage. It's quite surprising that they included the Marvel details in this one as well. This one, Submariner, and you see I'm going through now, 72. This is May 72. 
May 72, and we're now talking, oh, still got the ball band there. This is on there, you've got nifty notes, nostalgic, <laughs> nostalgic nuances. And you've got the list there, you've got Conan the Barbarian 15, you've got obviously Daredevil 87, you've got Avengers number 99, and many, many other, Thor 199, and so on. But, ah, that's why I think I got to the conclusion that they always included the issue as well as that, because they obviously decided not to change it every month. Maybe someone, they got confused or something, something happened, that they suddenly decided to include it anyway, just have the same list in each, because this time they got Submariner 49 there, which of course is the issue that I've got. So they did change it, and of course Luke Cage being advertised in the soapbox there. Mighty Marvel checklist, now on sale. And that's the thing I thought, why not include the same titles you've got there? Because at the end of the day, maybe it's just a reminder you can think, oh, maybe mention that to someone else. I don't know. <laughs> There's a logic to it, I suspect. But not so much. How this one's amazing adventure. And again, this is probably a 72, 70, oh, 71. So let's just see. 71 again. They did sort of vary it, and my apologies, going backwards and forwards. I thought I arranged them all in chronological order. Obviously, didn't do it very successfully. But again, you've got no checklist on this page. You've got a really long stand soapbox there, though. And you've got there Fantastic Four 112, Savage Tales, Tomb of Dracula, or the House of Dracula. We haven't decided yet. That's what I mean about that sometimes some of the titles, things change. So it was called at some point, this was going to happen. Then it didn't. So that's a good one. But I think the checklist, yes, checklist is on here again. They did include it. I always enjoyed it when it was that, at that section. I always remember flicking through. Some ways, it, keeping it on the other page, sort of having it here was actually nicer in some ways. So you've got Special Marvel Edition, you've got the Mighty Marvel Western. You've also got Our Love Story number 11. Again, you've got the And Still on Sale bit. So you've got Daredevil, Submariner. And this is Amazing Adventures. Does it include that there? No. No, that's not included. So again, they were still back in 71. They were still doing that. And this one's Hulk. Oh, again, they've got another bullpen again. And one page without the checklist. And this one. Oh, there it is. So you've got there, you can see Submariner 40, Daredevil 78, Hulk 190, Spider-Man 99, Fantastic 413, and so on. Of course, you've got the lovely there, yeah, Spider-Man, original unpublished art portfolios. Oh, that's in Daredevil. That was a weird combination. Secret of Spider-Man's Mask. Complete checklist. Another Submariner here, and again, it doesn't obviously include there. You can see the list there, and again, I suspect it's included. Oh, it does include it. I was flicking through. I always wonder if sometimes it suddenly gets missed, because <laughs> there it is. Now, this is later. This is into a slightly later period of 72, as far as I'm aware. Yes, May 72. And this is the Galactus story. And again, it was the Luke Cage one. So that was the same as the one earlier. You can see the list there. Mighty Marvel is on the move again, as it says. Now, this was the first month that I haven't bought any comics. Well, I probably did buy them, but I don't remember buying American comics before this time. I'm certain I did. But this was my first month, March 73. Though, I expect, yes, March 73, it says there. I don't know when I've actually bought it. It might have been January 73, I guess. But I always love this checklist because you can look at it and see all the comics that came out the month I first started. So Spider-Man 118, Fantastic 432, which was my first comic I ever bought. Captain Marvel 25, of course, very collectible. Marvel Team Up 7, Spoofs 4. I've got lots of these as well now. I've actually gone and bought most of the month ones that I can. Hulk 161, Thor 209, Captain America 159, I've got that one. Avengers 109, Submariner 59, Daredevil 97, and so on. Many of them are reasonably affordable. Captain Marvel 25, not so. And you can see Night Nurse number three. I haven't got that either. Cat, I have got, I think I've got Cat issue three. I haven't got Cat issue two. But anyway, you can see the list there. And again, you've got special messages over there. And you've got, of course, the bullpen and all the various other things. This time it's F, four or five phenomenal flashes. This is April. Now, sometimes what happened and this is April, and that was obviously the March one. So I've got a March issue, and you've got the April one. And you can see the list is exactly the same. So sometimes the months would be exactly identical. Now, I don't know if in the issue of April of other issues, that they were the same. 
But that one for the Kizar definitely was obviously a bi I assume it was a bi monthly or something. Does it say that? Yes, published bi monthly. Weird, weirdly. I wonder why they didn't include March, April on the thing. If it was bi monthly, they should have done March, April. Love this one, Doctor Strange. And this one obviously going back slightly again, 72. And again, we've got the list there. You've got Spider Man 114, Thor 205, Captain America, Spoof number two. We never bought copies of that. Claws of the Cat number one. I love that one. Marvel feature number six. And of course, in this time, you've got a picture of the cat. I guess that was probably repeated in lots of other magazines. Weirdly, you've got the advert there, the cat. Who else? And then this is the cat. Who else? <laughs> Two, two cats on the, that's a bit odd, isn't it? Including two of them. Still. This one, creatures on the loose. Let's just have a look. This was, oh, 72 again. So actually I thought that was later actually. That's weird. Now some of these ones didn't include the checklists. So I'm just flicking through there. Creatures on the, but this one did. <laughs> Which is, of course, the way when I say it. But things like some of the, probably the horror ones might not have included the details. But you can see again, oh, I'm Iron Man 52, not Iron Man 55. Right, so that. And then we're going into now, really a bit later. This one is in 76, December 76. Bit of a jump there. And you can see the checklist is no longer on that page. You can see there. I don't think the checklist was included. That's it. Checklist. You still got, obviously, oh, the letters pages. But I think the checklist had gone. That was it for the checklist. I don't know when the checklist suddenly disappeared. Obviously, 74, 75, somewhere along that line, it's gone. So you've still got the stand soapbox and you've still got, of course, the alliterations on there, which is always good. And this one is a Marvel feature, Red Sonja one, July 76. Let's see if that includes the checklist. Now, again, you've got all, of course, the, oh, they go for O's in this one, stand soapbox, of course, Master of Kung Fu. And Captain America there. You got about ever hear about the prisoner? Well, have you ever seen the incredible TV series starring Patrick McGowan? Just you're gonna hear plenty about it in the next few months. Starting this summer, Steve Englehart, an unchosen artist, will be teaming up to produce what may be possibly a super hit of the year. The prisoner. Well, it's filled with fancy mystery. See, that's what I mean. Those sort of things when you read that. Did they bring that out? Was there a prisoner magazine? I don't remember a prisoner magazine. <laughs> Quite, so there was, of course, the prisoner one that was coming out with Gil Kane and Jack Kirby. Of course, they brought out the artist edition, but that one now, Spidey Super Stories. I never bought any of those. Of course, got here mentions about Nova and the Invaders going monthly. And now we're into the final one. This is the final one, and this one does have, I think, still at this point, but it's really gone sort of all over the place in where it is. Oh. There it is, bullpen, and also you've got, of course, still got some halftime, 1979. So you've still got the bullpen, and you've got the stand soap box looking pretty quite a lot, filling half the page. There's good old stand soap box filling half the page, and then you've got the bullpen at the bottom there. You've got Pizzazz. Again, I never bought that. Pizzazz. Also, Sergeant Fury's Lonely Hearts Club Band. I wish I bought that one. Strange I didn't get that one. Marvel History Kiss, the Kiss Rock Special. I love that one. Bastard Glatzka, that was good. And Black Panther, it mentions, and also Dead Devil 156, but no checklist. Oh, it also mentioned about the ever unfolding epic since the Iliad. So that was the Avengers. So that's a sort of very rough run through. Maybe I might do another video making it try and work out even more logic to why that, how they did it. Now, the very early issues of Marvel, and I'm going to say I was going to look around and quickly pick up an omnibus, they didn't have it at all. So I've got this one, 62. So you've got 62 and you run through, obviously, one month. There's no checklist. Unless they obviously got rid of the checklist from these books, but they didn't have checklists. Now, sometimes, and I was, this is why I was pointing it out, you would have sort of down the bottom there, this is obviously a reference back to an earlier issue. But sometimes you would have in here, you'd have a list right down the bottom or somewhere, it would sort of like the Hulk is coming or something, that sort of thing. But in most cases, the checklists were very, very sort of rough announcements in the earlier days. And that's, well, have you got any happy memories about checklists? Did you like the checklist? Did you ever look at the checklist? <laughs> if you, maybe you'd not, unlike me, you probably never looked at the checklist. I don't know. But I, I always love those. Also the bullpen ones. I love reading all the comments, all the various things, as well as, of course, the letter pages. I would love to see a lovely collection of letter pages because letter pages got some fascinating letters. Of course, 
from many famous artists and writers that obviously went on obviously to bigger and better things. So they're always great. And also, of course, Stan's Soapbox. It would be nice to have... A, obviously, there is a book of Stan Soapbox that is definitely available. Notice it's not the cheapest of books now. It's, not, it's out of print, as far as I'm aware. So definitely, if you want to get a copy of it, worth checking out. But... Uh, did you ever read those as well? I mean, I loved reading those. That was always my go-to section. Well, I hope you found this of interest. And uh, I say, any comments, always great to hear from you. Bye.